Very good afternoon. Today I'd like to take a bit of time aside here to answer a question that was posed by a brother, Calcium Boy, and he was making an inquiry concerning Abraham's bosom and paradise. So I want to go through some of the scriptures here that we have both in the Old and New Testament to better qualify as to how things have played out historically with those two domains over time. The very first verse I'd like to take a look at here today is found in Luke chapter 23, 43. Scriptures say here, And Jesus said unto him, This is the thief at the cross, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. So it's that very day that Christ was to be crucified that he would be with him in paradise. So that's, that's the statement made here to the thief at the cross. A few other things to consider when it comes to the person of Jesus Christ is there were elements concerning his person that were from everlasting to everlasting that retained or was maintained within the abode of his father. And those verses are found in 1 Timothy chapter 6, 13, and in John chapter 3, 13. In 1 Timothy 6, 13, as scriptures state, I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things, and before Christ Jesus, who, before Pontius Pilate, witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, unto the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, now here it comes, who only hath immortality dwelling in the light, which no man can approach unto, whom no man has seen, nor can see. Now in John 3.13, the scriptures also state, And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. So he's telling Nicodemus here that he's in two places at the same time. He stands in agreement with Paul's testimony concerning Christ's eternal abode in glory, which could never be approached unto by man in 1 Timothy chapter 6, 13. And continuing on in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4, the Apostle Paul states here, how that he was caught up personally, Paul was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. So Paul was later given revelation. He was caught up into the third heavens. But we're going to take a look at a few other scriptures here, and we're going to try to better qualify some of these statements. Now we're going to jump ahead to Luke chapter 16, and we're going to do the cross-examination here of the account speaking of both Lazarus and the rich man. In Luke chapter 16, verses 23 down to 28, the scriptures state, And in hell he lifted up his eyes, that's the rich man, being in torments, and see the Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. So there is a gulf fixed between them. They can see one another. One was tormented, and the other one was comforted. And going on to verse 27, the scriptures state, Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Now, <clears throat> we have to recognize that the heavenly tabernacle that was made without hands had to be purged with better sacrifices than these, in contrast to the Old Testament. The Old Testament, the blood of bulls and goats can never take away sin, but the blood of Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin, and it was the blood of Jesus Christ that had to be applied in the heavenly tabernacle made without hands to purge that heavenly tabernacle. That heavenly tabernacle had witnessed revolt under the hand of Lucifer and company, and he took a third part of the angels with him. So that domain will one day be rolled up as a scroll, and it will, it will have fulfilled its purpose, and it will not be the permanent place or domain of God. It will not be the permanent place or domain of God. 
God is making a new heaven and a new earth where involved righteousness that will never have the need to be purged because Christ purged the old domain. That old domain will roll up as a scroll, but there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth where involved righteousness that will never ever be defiled. So that old domain uh, is referred to also as paradise. But we have to bear in mind that paradise it was also in the heart of the earth. Paradise was also in the heart of the earth and it was led captive by none other than Jesus Christ after his resurrection. And so we know that hell and paradise were later on, as we'll see in the scriptures, identified as being in the heart of the earth and Christ had to descend down into lower parts of the earth before he ascended. And he went and he preached unto the spirits in prison, as we'll note later on in some in Peter's scripture. What happens here in John chapter 20, verse 16, Jesus Christ meets Mary. And in John chapter 20, 16, Jesus saith unto her, Mary, she turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to, that, to my brethren. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I am ascended, that's going up, unto my Father and your Father, and to my God and your God. Later on, in the same passage of John, in John chapter 20, verse 27, the scriptures state, Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. Well, he didn't give that invitation until after he had ascended into heaven, and until after he had purged the heavenly tab tabernacle made without hands, and he came back and he then presented himself before among his disciples. When he presented himself among the disciples, at that juncture, there was no constraint for anyone to touch Christ because the heavenly tabernacle had already been purged. Leading up to that, Christ could not touch anyone for fear of defilement prior to his entering into the heavenly tabernacle made without hands. Later on in Luke chapter 24 verse 39, the scriptures state, Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see me have. So he gives the invitation here in Luke chapter 24 39 for his disciples to actually touch him. Where preceding that in Mary, prior to his ascension, he forbade her to touch him given the fact that he had not yet purged the heavenly tabernacle made without hands. In Ephesians chapter 4, in Ephesians chapter 4, there's more detail concerning this. The scriptures quote from Psalm chapter 68. In Ephesians 4 verse 8, the scriptures state, Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. He's quoting from Psalm chapter 68 verse 18. Scriptures state, Thou hast ascended on high, thou hast led captivity captive, Thou hast received gifts from men, yea, for the rebellious also, that the Lord might dwell among them. Now remember in the book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 40, the scriptures state, For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So Abraham's bosom was in the heart of the earth. Hell was in the heart of the earth. There was a great gulf fixed between them so that they couldn't pass one from another. And one was comforted, the other one was tormented. Christ descended first into lower parts of the earth. Then he's going to ascend up far above all heavens. Now in 1 Peter chapter 3.18, the scriptures state, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also 
He went and preached unto the spirits in prison. He's talking about those spirits that were in Abraham's bosom and that were in hell. He went and preached unto them, which sometime were disobedient, once the long suffering God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that his eight souls were saved by water. So he went and preached to the ones that were in hell. These were the ones that were disobedient to Noah, and they were preached to. 